Okay, so we have a terminal with a couple windows open here, open to our Rabbit demo environment. On the top, we have a terminal open in to Kubernetes 117.8 cluster. And on the bottom, this is showing you there's two pods running our RabbitMQ HA cluster. We're working out of K8S15 here in PX Backup, and we can see our rules for RabbitMQ for pre and post backup are already populated inside our setup. So to backup and see the information that RabbitMQ has inside this UI, You'll select the namespace RabbitMQ is running out of, which is RabbitMQ. And you can see it's actually deployed with quite a lot of objects. So um, that's something that PX Backup makes fairly easy to, to back up everything associated with it. Now let's log into our RabbitMQ environment. You can see the same information, which is there's two nodes running and all the administrative um, Kind of environment in the UI is available for you in terms of you know looking at the messages and and which ones are ready etc. So we have a pre-populated uh, send script which sends a message a persistent message to our RabbitMQ environment. You can see now it's populated in our one queue here. So this is a message that's sent to a hello queue and you can see it is ready and persistent. So uh, that message is really just a message that says, hello world. So now we're gonna take a backup of our RabbitMQ environment, which should include that message, right? If there's messages stuck in the queue, uh, we wanna make sure our, our backup does this. And so we do this by running our pre and post backup rules, which capture the definitions, stop the app internally so that everything's kind of flushed and, and ready for uh, no new IO so that the backup is application consistent. Let me go ahead and create that, which what happens is it will take a backup of those two PVCs that are running underneath the Rabbit MQ pods. Again, it makes sure it's application consistent by using the pre-rule just before it takes that snapshot. And after it's done doing the snapshot, it will go ahead and back up all the objects associated with Rabbit MQ, which is services, secrets, config maps, role bindings, uh, various things in Kubernetes. And so it captures that data and objects as one. So now our RabbitMQ obviously is still running during this process. Um, it, it will kind of uh, turn off and on because it does the pre and post rule does do a stop app start app. Uh, but as you can see, we can run receive and we received our message. So now the amount of ready messages is zero. So we've received our message already. So now our queue is empty in RabbitMQ. And so what we want to do here is kind of show you that by restoring from the backup we just took, um, we'll be able to receive that message once again, even without putting it back in the queue. It's because we restored the message that was in the queue at the time we took the backup. So let's go ahead and click restore on our backup, select the cluster we want to restore to, which is the same one, and replace everything in the uh, in the namespace, because what we're doing is basically saying overwrite RabbitMQ as it stands with the backup we just took. So we want to replace uh, the pods, the PVCs, and everything that uh, was part of that backup. And so those two pods will get terminated and restored from our backup. And so you can see once the PVCs are restored, the application resources get restored. Those are things like config maps and the staple set itself. And so we can see it's a success here. Just because the staple set does get restored, it does take a second to start everything back up. Obviously, Kubernetes will schedule and start things as it normally does. So it'll go through an init process and it'll go running again. As you can see, there's a, a error reported while this occurs because um, we basically replaced RabbitMQ with the, with the restored version. Um, but in just a few moments, uh, RabbitMQ will come back up, the second node will start, and we should see uh, basically a version of RabbitMQ that we were working with prior with our one message, which we can see now. It's back and connected, and there's our one message. So this was during our backup, there was a message in the queue, and we've already received it. So let's try and receive it again. Um, we didn't put anything back in it. We'll run receive, 
and there's our message again. So this just shows you that we added something to the queue, ran a backup, received it, and now and it went empty, and then we restored it, and we received it again, showing you that you actually did restore the messages at the time of the backup in there, using the pre and post hook rules for application consistency. Until next time, take care.